So you broke no contact and now you're worried that you've completely ruined your one chance to win back your ex. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's almost certainly still hope, but this depends very much on what you do next. So in this video, I'll cover whether or not your particular infraction is a deal breaker for your relationship, how to know for sure, and your next steps depending on your current situation. Hi guys, I of course am Brad Browning, author of The X Factor and Breakup Coach for the past almost 15 years now. And throughout my time here on YouTube, I've advocated for the no contact method above all others for people who do want to win back their exes. It's one of the, the pillars of my X Factor program and has helped me create the platform that I have today because it really works. Now, for those of you who don't know what no contact is, I have plenty of other videos on this channel that you can check out and I'll actually link to a couple of them in the description below that, you can, that cover uh, no contact in more detail. Basically, for the purposes of this video, no contact means that you cut off all contact with your ex after the breakup for around 30 days. Now this time allows you both to process the breakup and it also makes your ex miss your presence in their life and sort of softens them up so that when the time has come to reconnect, they're more likely to want you back. There's a lot more to it than that, like spending the time apart on self-improvement. But again, you should check out the related videos down below here uh, if you'd like a more in-depth discussion of what no contact is and why it works. So if the goal of no contact is no contact, then what happens if you break the rule? Well, let's quickly talk about why no contact works so well. It's about getting your ex to miss you as much as possible. And it's also about giving them a chance to forget about the negative memories associated with the breakup. If you stay in contact with them, then neither of these things are possible. Every time you contact your ex after your breakup, the more you're, you're hurting your chances because you're undermining the very process that will help you get them back. They can't miss you if you're still in their life and they won't forget the negative memories of your breakup when you keep reappearing and reminding them. Now, I'm sure you're saying, you know, I'm not trying to remind my ex of the breakup. I never even mention it when I talk to them. But the problem is that for the first 30 days or so, the breakup is going to be the first thing on their mind when they think about you. I mean, think about it. Breakups are traumatic, right? You and this person were extremely close, and for whatever reason, they chose to throw that all away. You know, this wasn't an easy decision, and I'm, it surely wasn't an easy process either. You know, I'm sure there was probably yelling tears and hurt feelings. At the very least, you know, there's a profound sense of loss that comes after a breakup. And these are the things that you're bringing up in your ex's mind whenever you text them or call them soon after the breakup. It doesn't matter what you say or how good your conversation seems to go. This kind of dark cloud of the breakup is going to be hanging over the conversation every time. So at this point, you might be thinking, I've screwed up in a major way. It sounds like I've ruined any chance that I have with this person. But I am here to tell you that while you did probably mess up, chances are that this wasn't face fatal and you still have a chance to fix things. The truth is that as long as you recognize your mistake and go back into no contact right away, you still stand a good chance of reconnecting with your ex after the 30 days have passed. Now, this is because no contact is so effective that it can withstand, you know, a few little mistakes here and there. Because, let's face it, breakups are complicated. People are prone to reaching out to their exes after things have ended. Now, if everyone who'd done this had screwed up their chances for good, then people would probably never get back together. The truth is that no contact isn't some magic formula that's guaranteed to get your ex back, and if you stray from it, then you've gone from 100 to 0 just like that. No contact just gives you the best chance of winning your ex back. So, every time you break no contact, you're hurting your chances, but it does take some serious contact to destroy those chances completely. Now, I am a little bit worried that some of you are going to take this idea the wrong way. You, know, you might be thinking that I'm telling you that a little contact here and there is okay, so you don't really have to stick to no contact if you want your ex back. But please, that is not the takeaway here. So don't use that as a justification to continue to contact your ex. That kind of mindset is just going to hurt your chances, and if you don't stop, it will completely wreck any chance you had of getting your ex back. Because every time you break no contact, it becomes a little less effective. The more you talk to your ex, the less time they're able to spend missing you, and the more time they'll spend thinking about your breakup. And beyond that, it's going to be extremely confusing to your ex if you're texting them all day and then suddenly drop off the face of the world. Now, while you may know that you're just doing no contact, they'll think that you're being rude, weird, or unreliable. Now, when you reach out to your ex after the 30 days have passed, they may think that you're just going to disappear again, so why bother responding at all? And this is why it depends on how you broke no contact, how the interaction went, and how long you two spoke for. Now, if you've watched some of my past videos, you'll know that there are even circumstances where I do recommend breaking no contact. Like if you have children together, or if you still live or work together. So there is a little leeway here. But let's get into some, some examples. So let's start with a best case scenario. Say it's been, you know, two days since your breakup and your ex still has some of your stuff and you texted them trying to get it back. You arranged to meet and as soon as you both had your belongings and you were on your way, you went right in back into no contact. 
Now, in this kind of situation, I don't really consider you even to have broken no contact at all. You know, you had a legitimate reason to speak to them. You didn't get dragged into a fight or a discussion about the breakup or your feelings. You merely got your possessions and you moved on with your life. But let's go to another example. This is a, a common one. You sent them, you know, a random text asking how they're holding up. They responded, you responded back, and the conversation wrapped up neatly. Now, while in this case this is clearly breaking no contact, this is just about the, the best you can do here. I'd recommend that you never follow up and just recommit to the no contact process. But, you know, what if things were a little more intense? You know, maybe you've been talking to your ex every day. Maybe you've been meeting in person or even sleeping together. Now, this is not a great situation to be in if you do want your ex back. While it may seem, you know, on the surface like you're closer to them than you were a week ago, remember that you're still broken up with this person. So instead of reconnecting with them in a real way, you're really just giving them emotional and physical support during their time of need. And one of the reasons that I typically advise against sleeping with an ex is that you're actually helping them to get over you even as you spend more time with them. And the same goes with, with being a, a shoulder to cry on for your ex and providing, providing each other with you know, emotional support through the breakup. And while I'm sure you both probably appreciate this, you're not rekindling the relationship as much as you are creating a new, lesser relationship that'll be difficult to turn into something real. Now, if this is your situation, then a lot of the time, I think you need to have a talk with your ex about what happens next. You know, they should know that you want a relationship with them. So this kind of half fling or friendship that you've got going on is not gonna give either of you what you want. And from there, it's important to get a clean break and begin no contact all over again at day zero. Then in a lot of situations, I recommend that your no contact period actually increases to at least 45 days so that you and your ex have a chance to forget that this kind of backslide ever happened. Now, if you're struggling to maintain no contact, now is the time to consider seeking outside help. So please consider signing up for my one-on-one -on -one coaching program at breakupbrad.com coaching. I've helped thousands of people get their exes back by walking them through this kind of difficult period of time. Again, just go to breakupbrad.com slash coaching to see if I have any slots available right now, and I would really look forward to hearing from you. All right, and moving on, uh, another possible result of breaking no contact is that you get drawn into another big fight with your ex. Now, this is really common after a breakup because, of course, emotions are running high, and the two of you may have, you know, unfinished business. Now, this is a very bad situation that will hurt your chances with this person going forward. You know, you may have said things that hurt their feelings and vice versa. It can be tempting to keep going to try to find a resolution and quash this beef so that it doesn't get any worse. But I really need you to fight this urge and instead walk away, breathe, and get a clean break from them. There's nothing you can say right now that's gonna make things better. Instead, it's really just bound to lead to more fighting since you're obviously in very bad headspaces at the moment. So separate from your ex entirely and resume no contact. Now this is another situation where I'd recommend you start the process over from the beginning and do a full 30 days beginning today. If you don't, it can make the reattraction process a lot more difficult. Because, you know, really, if you had a big fight on day 20 and then you reach out to them 10 days later, they're going to think that you're just here to start trouble. Now, the good news is that fighting your ex with your ex like this, while it can be destructive, is not always the, the death sentence that a lot of people think. In fact, it's usually indicative of the fact that they still have feelings for you. Remember that the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. So if they still care enough to fight with you, then they still care about you on some level. All right, and that's pretty much it for this video. Remember that breaking no contact doesn't always mean that you've screwed up your chances for good, but it's not something to make a habit of if you really want this person back in your life. And while you are here, please like this, this video and uh, subscribe to my channel for more help winning back your ex. I am Brad Browning, AKA Breakup Brad. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.